Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Not Church, where we encourage people to think. What's up, everybody? I'm still drinking my coffee. <laughs> Got a little banana in it. A little oatmeal. Just a little bit of oatmeal. I have some vegan protein powder in it. I know some of you guys are like, oh, that. I would never drink that. <laughs> Doesn't sound too good, but I got um, some sugar-free uh, syrup, just a little bit, not a lot. And I have about three packets of Splenda in this and ice. I'm drinking it just before my workout. It actually tastes pretty good. Don't knock it till you try it. Um, today, I just want to have... Um, a rather short discussion with you about the heading of this channel, not church. But I want to let you know I'm at St. Paul Lutheran Church parking lot, St. Paul's. Interestingly, I was at St. Paul's Reform Church right down the street on the sign. It said, all are welcome, no exceptions. I was like, wow, I left that parking lot because it wasn't enough lighting out there. Here's more light out in the open, actually closer to the road. But I wanted to talk to you about Not Church, the heading of Not Church, why I titled this channel Not Church, the significance of the time that we're in in regard to the, U the YouTube channel and where I think the church is, is headed and maybe some things that we can start doing to prepare ourselves. So the title, Not Church, uh, and I've said it in previous YouTubes, is not telling people not to go to church. If you notice, I do have a question mark because it encourages people to think about church in a different way. And the reason that I decided to move into this um, area, this direction, is because of a need for persons, in my opinion, at least to be honest about the church, honest about where we are as a, as a people. And I want to share some of those things with the general public, the things that I learned in seminary and the things that I don't, the things that I learned through personal experience, the things that I learned outside of seminary, because seminary sometimes is sort of limited in their thinking because they want you to think a certain way and go a certain way and all that. And the entire essence of this channel, at least, is it's okay to think. Now, when we think about that it, Sunday is still the most segregated day of the week. And we wrestle with that thing and wrestle with that thing for years. And people have even, I've even heard uh, professors say things like, you know, maybe God wants it to be that way. So we see a shift in that from previous thought. Because in previous thought, heaven was a place, is a place that everybody congregates and everybody is perfected. They have their glorified bodies. And color is insignificant. And supposedly we're striving to be more like Jesus and Jesus saw these things as insignificant according to the gospels. The people that we look down upon, Jesus didn't look down upon them. The people that we enslave, God don't enslave. God even provides balance to the poor and, and admonishes believers to give to them, to bring them higher in their socioeconomic status. 23 to 2,500 years of the Christian church's existence. Has that really happened? The other thing is whether we want to come to terms with this or not, it is a, a valid question that I think the church needs to ask itself. Uh, if it's the church, if it says that it is one of the churches of Jesus Christ, you must ask this question. Do persons of various cultures, tradition, and for lack of a better term, races in America view Jesus the same way? Do we 
views, the blessings that one received from Jesus, do we all see that the same? Does the black folk have a different expectation of Jesus than the white folks? Does the Hispanics have a different um, expectation? Do, do the Indians, do the Chinese Christians have a, a different idea of what they expect from Jesus than the persons that are of color? Because if everybody is thinking of this differently, then there's always going to be confusion in the church. And we see it. We see it right now. I mean, we're right smack dab in the middle of COVID. And seemingly God is literally pushing people out of the church. What is God saying to God's people through the COVID? What is God saying with the height of the disdain between the Islam religion and the Christian religion? And I say those because those are the two largest uh, sects of religion in America are the fastest growing, the largest in the world, Christianity and Islam. Uh, what do we do with that? What do we do with that, with that great divide? Nothing. We just exist and never address those differences. Just, just want to shift gears. I think that it's a, it, for some, it is a very scary time because we are trying to locate God in the midst of this confusion. I mean, the, the, the church of Jesus Christ has been in existence 23 to 2,500 years. Yet, the Christians have led the way in divorce rate. We've led the way over the years and through the last 23 to 2,500 years We've led the way in, I would even use the term dominating, domineering, uh, dictatorial attitude towards other people. In other words, you do it, do it my way or die. Do it my way or get out of my life. Do it my way or I don't want to have anything to do with you. We're freaking scared. The Christians are scared right now. And clearly the scripture says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but we're scared. Is Jesus going to put new wine in old bottles? Is he going to do that again? You know, right down the street, this reformed church said, you know, come, come back. No exceptions. We accept everybody. So we go back, right, as a people, as an African American people. For what? To experience the same racism that we've always experienced? The same division? For what? Why should we ponder the notion of not church? Jesus, Jesus, in many ways, disdained the church. I know that's a hard pill for us to swallow. I'm talking about the institution of the church. Jesus literally hated the way people were when it came to church. Because people in their systems... I, Actually, I was getting ready to go to a black church down the road, right, and sit in their parking lot. But you know what? I didn't sit in their parking lot because they had they had fences up around their church guards to where I couldn't even get into the parking lot to park my car with rocks. They're begging people to come to the church. They want people to come to the church, but have borders on the doors, have borders on the entryways. What kind of foolishness is this? You know, Jesus was opposed to this kind of conduct. As we get closer to what Jesus's heart really was, we're going to find out that the church is really not the building. It's not the establishment at all. Not the building. It's not the doctrines. It's not any of that. 
It is knowing Jesus in your heart. And it is connecting to God in your heart. Every individual. Is this to say that we throw all of the doctrines away? No. We have to change the way we're doing things. And I at least believe that God is speaking that very clearly. Thank you for tuning in to this session. And another thing, I'm going to say this really quick. I'm going to do a host of, uh, and I don't know when, I don't know, but it's coming soon. And my soon may be different from your soon. I'm thinking at least one or two, maybe more by the end of the year, because I got a lot going on with school. But I'm going to present you a lot more resources. And I'm going to bring out a lot more historical facts for your convenience. To help you understand God, because it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be scared thinking, well, if not this, then what? Where do I go? You should have such a robust relationship with God that none of the other stuff really matters at the end of the day. You don't, you can access God in your freaking bathroom. You can go to your closet and access God. You can access God like I do on a walk. Huh? Experiencing God all over. These systems ain't working. Y'all see it. You see it. It's all around you. The systems are not working. They're not working. Denominationalism is not working. It's dividing. It's very clear. So we want to express some of this and look, don't, don't be discouraged. I'm not telling you not to go to church. If you go to church this morning, this Sunday morning, 723, get up and go to church. I have no qualms with you going to church. I just want you to understand a little bit better what you're walking into. Okay, and what you're injecting into your life and into your families. Okay, family. So thank you again for tuning in. Be looking for another message very soon. Be looking for references that I'm going to put in the description box that you will be able to access from credible men of God, women of God, and just regular people who are abreast and intelligent where history is concerned. Love you. God bless Till we meet again and remember it is okay to think peace everybody won't be on top yeah whether the roof or the mountaintop right